Hello and welcome again to Flipped Harbor for Pre-Calculus. In this video we're going to be learning how to solve nonlinear inequalities. Our objectives for this lesson are to find out how to find the solution regions for polynomial inequalities and how to find the solution regions for rational inequalities. Our outline for this video, we're going to start with a factored polynomial inequality and that fact, the fact that it comes to us factored is nice. We're really happy about that. Then we're going to take a look at a quadratic inequality, which is just a special type of polynomial. It's just not going to be factored for us. And then we're going to end by taking a look at a rational inequality. So starting out with a factored polynomial inequality, the reason that this is so nice that this is given to us factored is just like we were doing when we were trying to solve polynomials, we're actually going to look at this as a polynomial equation where we're solving the polynomial equals zero. So I know we've, this starts out it's supposed to be a polynomial inequality, but we're going to find a polynomial equation equal to zero first. Now since it's factored, all I need to do is set each of my factors equal to zero separately. So I get x plus 2 equals zero, or x minus 1 equals zero, or x minus 4 equals zero. And we already know what the solutions for that is. That's no big deal. Negative 2, 1, and 4. Let's put those on a number line. So we have negative 2, 1, and 4 on a number line. And you might be asking yourself, um, that doesn't really look right. And the scale of this doesn't matter at all. The purpose for this number line is just a way to help me visualize my answer, a way to help me stay organized. So the fact that from negative 2 to 1 might be a bigger scale than some other region, that's OK. Okay, the scale of this doesn't exactly matter. If you want to have zero in the middle, fine. If you want to have it absolutely perfect to scale, you want to get out some graph paper, fine. All we're doing here is getting organized. I want to mark my zeros on this number line because my next step is I'm going to choose a number from each of these four regions. So I'm going to choose a number from this leftmost region where x is less than negative 2. Now any number less than negative 2 is going to work. Don't get crazy. Don't use something like negative 112. Negative 3 would work just fine. That's less than negative 2. We're going to choose a number between negative 2 and 1. Now, any number would work. I could use a fraction if I wanted to, 1 fourth. That's between negative 2 and 1. But you know, the best number to plug in is 0. That's between negative 2 and 1. Might as well make it easy on myself. I'm going to choose a number between 1 and 4. And I'm going to choose a number that is greater than 4. That's from this last fourth region. Again, make it simple on yourself. Don't choose something ridiculously far away. Don't choose 13 or 842. Choose 5. It's still greater than 4. doesn't matter how much greater than 4 it is. So I choose each of these values and I plug them into my inequality. And what I'm checking for is, is this a true statement? Is negative 3 plus 2 times negative 3 minus 1 times negative 3 minus 4 greater than 0? Now let me give you a little trick. It doesn't actually matter what the number is. If I look at this as a product of positives and negatives, I can figure out if it's greater than zero. Negative three plus two is a negative number. It's negative one, but what matters is it's negative. Negative three minus one, well that's a negative number. And negative three minus four, that's a negative number doesn't matter what the value is, just the fact that they are each negative. If I take a negative times a negative times a negative, do I get a number that's greater than zero? No, I get another negative. So this is creating a false statement, and that's important to us. Now I want to go ahead and try a number from each of these regions. Again, let's plug in zero, let's plug in two, and let's plug in five. And here I've labeled whether they create a false or a true statement. So my first region, no matter what number I pick, is going to create a false statement. So that polynomial is not greater than zero there. In my second region, I tried zero. Any number would give me a true statement. So that second region is always true. The third region is always false. And the last region is always true. 
So if I mark them all close to my number line, I can see where my solution regions are. My solution regions are where it creates a, two, a true statement. So from negative 2 is less than x is less than 1. That's a true statement. So that's part of my solution. And when x is greater than 4, that's another part of my solution region. This is technically an or statement in between. So it's negative 2 is less than x is less than 1, or x is greater than 4. But here's my solution to this polynomial inequality. Now let's try this on a quadratic. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to treat it like it's equal to 0. We're going to find the zeros. And this quadratic factors quite nicely into x plus 2 times x plus 3. So my two zeros are negative 2 and negative 3. I mark those on the number line and I choose a number from each of my three regions. So I choose a number like negative 4. That's from that first region. I choose a number like negative 2.5. Any negative 2 point something would work. Uh, you know, it's, it's right there in the middle. And then again, 0 is so great to plug in. If you can, use 0 as one of your numbers. So again, I'm interested do I create true or false statements? So negative 2 plus 4, well, that's a negative. Negative 4 plus 3, that's a negative. Is a negative times a negative less than 0? How about my middle one? Negative 2.5 plus 2, that's a negative. Negative 2.5 plus 3, that's a positive. So how about a negative times a positive? Is that less than 0? And what about the bottom one? Is 2 times 3 less than 0? Well, we start out with a false statement. A negative times a negative creates a positive, so that's not less than 0. And then when I take a negative times a positive in the middle, that creates a true statement because that creates a negative number. And my bottom one, 2 times 3 isn't less than 0. 6 is greater than 0, so that's a false statement. So now I can see my answer starting to take shape. If I label it by the number line, I can see that my true region is from negative 3 to 2. So my solution, I'll write for my answer, negative 3 is less than x is less than negative 2. Now let's jump up to our original inequality up here at the top. If I had an or equal to, I would put an OR equal to in my answer. All right, now, before I leave this one, let me just say something. Please do not get in the habit of assuming that there is any sort of pattern to these false and trues. Okay, just because it's false first does not mean that it's followed by a true statement. Just because we have a true statement does not mean that it's followed by a false. So don't assume any pattern to these. Now, let's end by taking a look at a rational inequality. And I have a rational expression, x minus 3 over x plus 4 is greater than 3. Now, I don't really want a 3 over here. I want a 0 over here on the right. So how in the world am I going to get a 0 over there? Well, it's actually pretty easy. I'm just going to subtract my 3 over. Now I've got that 0 that I wanted here on the right. But now I've got another problem. I've got a fraction minus a whole number. Well, whenever we were taking fractions and adding or subtracting them, we'd get a common denominator. My common denominator that I'm going to get is x plus 4. So I need to change that 3 into something over x plus 4. Well, I'll multiply by x plus 4, top and bottom. And I have 3x plus 12 on top, x plus 4 on the bottom. Now that I have that common denominator, I'm going to mash them together by actually doing that subtraction. x minus 3x and negative 3 minus 12. And that's going to get me negative 2x minus 15 over x plus 4. Now I'm still going to do the same thing. I'm going to act, at least for a little while, like this is equals 0 instead of being greater than 0. 
But all I really need to do here is set all of my factors, whether the factor is on the top of the fraction or the bottom of the fraction, all I need to do is set the factor equal to 0. So I've got negative 2x minus 15 equals 0, or x plus 4 equals 0. x equals negative 15 halves, or x equals negative 4. And I go through the exact same process. I set up a number line to help me get organized. Negative 15 halves is negative 7.5, so that's going to be to the left. I go ahead and I am going to pick a number and I've set it back up with the original inequality here. So I'm going to choose a number from each of these three regions and plug them into the original inequality and decide do I get a true statement. So over here at the far left, negative 10 minus 3, that's negative 13 over negative 10 plus 4, so that's going to be negative 13 over negative 6. Negative 13 over negative 6, that's a little bit more than 2 because I can think of it as 13 over 6. That's a little bit more than 2. Is that greater than 3? No, that creates a false statement. What about in the middle? Negative 5 minus 3, that's negative 8 over negative 5 plus 4, so that's negative 8 over a negative 1. So negative 8 over a negative 1 is a positive 8. That is greater than 3. So this one does work out. And then if I check the end, negative 3 over 4, that's negative 3 fourths. That's not greater than 3. So my true region is right here in the middle. So my solution would be negative 15 halves is less than x is less than negative 4. Alright, so that's it. It's time for you to try some of these on your own. I'll see you in class and I'll see you online.